they're going to have to get one of the people to turn on the other or to have a witness that actually saw it or saw something that they can use. A plea for anyone to come forward more than eight years after a driver hit and killed Stephen Smith in the middle of a road in Hampton County, South Carolina. As experts and lawyers for Smith's family discuss results of a second autopsy. We know more about the ma uh, manner of death. Um, whether it happened by accident or not is still uh, out, out for debate. Thanks for joining us here on Law and Crime. I'm Anjanette Levy. Stephen Smith's mother and her lawyers thought they'd have some answers about who caused his death by Labor Day, since a grand jury was investigating Stephen Smith's death. But that day passed with no arrests or suspects named. It's now nearly December, and the team working for Smith's mother is now willing to discuss the results of a second autopsy performed earlier this year. I spoke with Dr. Michelle Dupree, who oversaw the exhumation and autopsy of Smith, and Ronnie Richter, one of the lawyers representing Smith's mother. Is there anything you can tell us about that second autopsy and whether it confirmed the first autopsy's findings or were there some differences that you're allowed or that you're able to tell us about? Sure. Um, essentially, it was the same thing. There were some very minor differences. Um, but, you know, you've had three forensically trained pathologists look at the body and examine it. And you're not going to get much of a difference on that. The interpretation may be a little different, but essentially it's the same thing. You know, we found no injuries whatsoever below the head, um, other than a little bit of road rash on his arms, which you would expect. Um, and even though we don't believe that he was struck with the vehicle proper, he, we believe he was struck with something on or attached to the vehicle. And so technically it is still a hit and run. Dr. Dupree says something hanging off of that vehicle hit Smith's forehead, which caused his death. That is the initial strike that we believe, and that was done with such force that it literally knocked him down where he stood, which is why some of the evidence was a bit confusing, which is why his shoes were still on. Um, again, this is a, an atypical um, motor vehicle pedestrian collision. When he was struck down and he hit the pavement, that caused a secondary fracture to the back of the skull, the posterior area. And that actually is what did the majority of the damage. There's something we call eggshell fractures and the base of the skull, what the brain sits on top of, that was fractured tragically so much so that it was not a survivable injury. What exactly hit Stephen Smith's forehead remains a mystery, but Ronnie Richter seems confident about what didn't hit Smith causing his death. Could have been a mirror, could have been a ladder, some fixed extension of the vehicle is more likely than not. Mm -hmm. uh, according to our experts, if someone hung out of a vehicle, for example, and swung an object, that, that the force that would be realized on the hands of the, of the perpetrator would be as great as the force that was inflicted on Stephen. So someone somewhere would have reported to a hospital, likely with shattered wrist, shattered hands, some serious injuries of their own. So that seems not likely. Also, the pattern of the impact on the head is not consistent with that of a bat or some other object that you might swing. It's important to note the pathologist who conducted the first autopsy ruled the manner of death in Stephen's case undetermined, while the experts who performed the second examination have called it a homicide because Smith's death was caused by another person. Ronnie Richter says the area of the road where Smith was hit has also raised questions. When he struck, he's literally on the yellow stripe in the middle of the road. So if you can put that in some context, you're walking down a, a dark, I mean, country dark back road in the middle of the night and you're on the yellow stripe. Uh, it struck him uh, as he was facing the, the vehicle. So obviously he would have seen it coming. And so how does that happen that he sees a vehicle coming and does not move from the center line to be struck by some uh, extension of the vehicle? So there's more to the story than that, but yes. Earlier this year, SLED confirmed it was investigating Smith's death as a homicide. Hopes were high that an arrest was coming. But the investigation stalled, we're told, because of allegations of jury tampering in Alec Murdoch's double murder trial that warranted the attention of SLED agents, along with SLED preparing for Murdoch's financial crimes trial, 
that never happened since Murdoch pleaded guilty and was sentenced this week. I think right now we're probably at a little bit of a standstill. Um, I think that they're still investigating, but you know, it's been almost nine years and all of the physical evidence is, is likely gone. I am, I, I am confident that SLED is behind this. We've had many conversations with Chief Keel. We have great, a great deal of confidence in his agency. And so, yes, I think when they start applying their full resources and, and demanding answers, that somewhere, someone in this chain with material information is, is going to break and is going to share. As far as the Murdochs go, for years, podcasts and documentaries have suggested Smith's high school classmate, Buster Murdoch, may have been involved in causing Stephen Smith's death. But Dr. Dupree doesn't believe it. I really don't think that the Murdochs were involved. You know, we don't know who was in the vehicle, of course, not yet. We have some suspicions and people of interest, but I don't believe the Murdochs were involved. I believe this was truly an accident, a tragic accident. Sadly, Smith's mother is left to wait longer for answers. Sandy, she's got the patience of Job. She's waited for eight years. I think what the hope is with our team is for an event like this to happen, it, it's impossible to keep this a secret, especially in a place like Hampton. So there are other people who know. And so as the investigation takes place and as the pressure of the investigation builds, you don't want to be that person with knowledge who's charged with obstruction because you're not forthcoming with what you know. And so somewhere in this process, time and pressure will break somebody with material information, and that's gonna crack the case. Sandy Smith has been offering a $30,000 reward from money she raised through a GoFundMe to pay for the exhumation and second autopsy. She's now planning to increase that reward to $40,000. Anyone with information about Smith's death should contact SLED or the offices of Bland Richter. For Law and Crime, I'm Anjanette Levy.